Yeah, you know, something that came in over the weekend. This connector has been burned. And I'm suspecting that the issue starts here and not um, and not there. Because I don't trust these um, IDC connectors, insulation display, ugh, insulation displacement. Because those little prongs, I doubt they make sufficient contact. So they have this big song and dance about tri on blah 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 connectors that touch these pins on you know four sides and what to get decent transmission of power between you know the, the little slider that goes on and the pin itself. But then they go and put on these shitty little things that barely make contact with a wire in any case. And the evidence is clear that this, it's not a it's not a decent solution. Um, on this connector we also have some burning. Some melting. I'm melting. So we're gonna take these off and put different ones on um, that have um, connectors that go into these. This is called the header, and this is called the connector. I don't ask. That's just the way it is. The headers I'm gonna change to be able to take different um, connectors, and the connectors I use are. The wires are crimped onto the little pins and you can solder them on and so on, making sure that there's a decent connection between the wire and the pin that goes, or the little connector that plate that goes onto the pin. And that, it works well. I, it's not a trifurcon blah blah blah, but it makes better contact than these do. And so that's what I'm going to do. Today. I'm not going to show you how I desolder these boards because according to the experts that comes with hard work and dedication but basically comes down to heating the pins sucking the solder off until it's clear pulling the connector away and I do my heating with a soldering iron and I do my sucking with a solder sucker that I don't have out on the bench today and um that's the story. I'll get back to you when it's done, show you what it looks like. Alright, so I got the connectors off. And you can see this one went hot all the way through. And it burnt, you know, it heated up the pin so much that it heated up this piece of board. And these tracks over here, you can see these little, little bullockies of solder that came out the ends there. Were squirted out under the conformal coating, so it means that these tracks were heated up a lot. It heated up these tracks so much so that some of these pads have delaminated. I don't want to mess with it too much because I still think it's salvageable. But you'll see that pad isn't stuck to the board anymore. Which is unsurprising because it's burnt black. You know, like the connector. So what a lot of people do when they desolder these connectors is they're not careful enough with these things. I just want to... Ah! I drew you a picture. So here's the picture. So okay, <clears throat> what you see here is this is the board with a hole going through it. And this here is the copper plating that's left after the rest has been, has been etched away. Anyway, this is the pad. So the pin will come through here and it'll be soldered on this side. And some of the solder will wick through and make a little solder blob on that side. So the pin will be soldered into this hole, but all this is copper. How they get the copper on the inside of the hole is they, they smear some other goop in there that coats this edge of the fiberglass board <clears throat> with something that attracts copper and then they replate it. So they've got copper little little they've got a little bit of copper plating that goes and sit goes and sits inside the hole. That's why it's called through hole plating. So that that pad and that pad is electrically connected. Now what happens is you have a pin sitting here and you know, the rocket surgeon that desolders the connector for you heats up this part of the, the pad and then yanks it as soon as that's melted. It doesn't, he doesn't wait for the whole, th you know, you have to wait for the whole thing to heat up sufficiently so that all the solder that's in here, solder with an L, is melted. And then you can pull the pin out. But uh, what, what happens often is that the, the bottom half is soldered, it gets sucked away with a solder sucker and then 
there's not enough thermal contact between a solder tip and the rest of it to heat it all up and then it looks loose and they yank it out and they tear this part of the pad off or they rip the inner, the through hole plating, rip, they rip that out. So what's happened with that pad is, well I don't know what's happened with the, with the through hole plating, it might still be there, but it's definitely broken on the one end. So what you'll have to do is make sure with the multimeters to check if that pad and that pad is still electrically connected, because if one hole on the board is through hole plated then they all are. And many times a routing will take place, let's say the chip is on this side of the board, Routing will take place on this side because there's some other routing issue conflict on the bottom. Which is really bad news for oaks that are reworking boards because if you're desoldering, you're desoldering on this part. You can't reach underneath the chip most of the time. So when you're ripping that out, you're breaking this part of the, of the pad most likely. And then you have to go and check. And if there's, if there's a fault, then you have to go and fix it. So you have to go and connect that pad with that pad somehow. Sometimes you put a little wire in there with the leg of the chip or the chip carrier or whatever you're putting back in there. You can do that where you can drill a hole and physically solder it there and there. And so what I'm going to have to do is to stitch all these holes and make sure that they're <laughs> that they're connected before I put you know the connector or the, the header pins back in. So that's that's what's left to be done. But anyhow the the connectors have both been taken off and it looks it looks okay except for this part here that was burnt. I'll, I'll flip the board over just now and just make sure that everything's kosher before I put the headers back in. But that's the issue with these things. So when you desolder these things, just be careful. Hard work and dedication is not going to get you there. Thinking about it like a, you know, <laughs> just thinking about it properly. Doing, just do it properly and you won't have issues. If you do have issues, that's most probably what's happened. So that's my rant for the day. I mean, you can see these boards are sitting there with like a broken connector or something, and the you know the, you big, the big hairy gorilla approaches this thing with a big soldering iron that's that big and nothing else, and heats it up a little bit and starts yanking on the other side, and you can hear this board going, "Don't hurt me, Arch, I'm only little," and it just so all right. It happens most often with the, the well, the thing that gets changed a lot on these boards is the, um, the, rectum for, the rectifiers sitting on that side of the board and that happens often so what I often do is I when I put in new, um, new rectifiers I stitch the board again just to make sure that there's connectivity also with the caps because the caps get changed a lot and they have these uh, Schmidt they're there those are the cap connectors and that's quite a staunch pin so it seems like an easy thing to do. You heat up that pin and you start wiggling the cap and it comes out, but it rips out the hood through hole plating and the pad on the other side. So just be careful when you do that. Or send your boards to me. Alright, that's the delight on this side with the melted, what's left of the connector that's melted onto the board. And um, as luck would have it, I can see no tracks coming to these pads on this side. So the through hole plating might not be an issue. Although there's one track I can see in the darkness, you can see that pad is connected to that track. So through hole plating will be an issue where you least expect it. So I'm going to have to check all these pads. Um, I'll clean that up, I'm going to have to chip that off and make sure I can see the board so I can see what's happening. Fortunately it's... oh, that's typical. Yeah, it's typical. Okay. When the board heats up that much. You must understand that this board is fiberglass in this case, or in most cases. And then it gets a layer of copper, a thin layer of copper, stuck onto it with some other adhesive. Um, and then the copper gets a mask on it, in other words it gets painted where you want the copper to remain like all these tracks just get painted on basically or get printed on that's what's called a printed circuit board PCB and then the whole thing gets dunked in an in an uh, well you can call it an acid but it's it's either ferric chloride or some combination of um, HCl and, and, and H2O2 but whatever the case may be something that eats away the copper where it's not painted where it's exposed and then when all the copper is eaten away, what you're left with are the tracks. But these tracks are still 
thin and flimsy and they are stuck onto the board with an adhesive and as we all know glue gets undone by heat. So when this thing heats up too much these tracks come away from the board so when you need to be a hell of a careful I'll probably have to take this fuse holder off as well just to make sure that the track isn't completely screwed. Um, and then I'll definitely have to trace where this track goes and probably stitch it from the bottom to wherever it ends up on the top. So it's not always as simple as it looks, especially when it's this badly damaged or where there's corrosion damage or acid damage or something. It can become a rabbit hole quickly. Um, if you want to do this at home, um, take your time, think about it, take lots of photographs and take it slowly and you'll get there. Um. <laughs> All right, what I've gone and done is I ran to my computer, started up a PDF with the schematics in it, and I've checked that on this connector, um, it's connected to fuses that sit here. And I've went and buzzed it out, made sure with my multimeter and continuity mode, continuity mode just makes sure that if there's connectivity you hear a buzz, and on some nice ones, if there's a little bit of resistance, you hear a different buzz, but that's another story. So I went and checked that that pad on the bottom is connected to that pad on a track that runs on the other side. The track is obviously stuffed, but I went and... Is that in the middle of my picture? Is that in the middle? Looks like it. Right, I've gone and checked that that... That pad is connected to it. Oh, I switched the multimeter off. <laughs> okay, we're back up and running. That pad is connected to that, and that is connected to that. And to make sure I took the fuses out so I don't get continuity between that and that, so just prevents me from connecting that to that by mistake, which will make the fuse redundant. All right, so went and checked on the schematic. It corresponds to what I have here, that's J120, you can still see it printed on the board, that's J121. That connector and that connector is just straight through. These pads are connected to those pads on the bottom. It's because that one goes to the back box and this one goes to the play field, so you have two different wire harnesses coming in, two different connectors, just makes sense. Um, but they do the same thing. Right, so I'm going to put the headers back in, solder them from the bottom, connect those with wires that I've marked with white marker so I don't forget and then that's the job connectors have been soldered in and those stitches or the bridges have been connected So this is what the headers look like on the component side. They're not quite the same as the originals, but they have the same footprint and the pins are the same size. And they go with those. So these little pins will be connected to the wires individually, stuck into the connector housings and then plugged into these with a friction fit spring effort. And they last. And they do the job well. So that's the board repair for today. Thanks for watching.